Welcome to part B of part six of the series, uh, Creating Complex Studio Solutions. We were just wrapping up another CRUD operation on the DAOs, um, insert employee, and we ran a test. So at this point, let's run the application and we'll see the output uh, of the console app. And then we can go from there once we verify everything's working. In this second installment of part six, I want to implement a delete employee, update employee, and a couple other common uh, or custom DAO methods, right? To take advantage of some of the other fields we have in our table. So everything looks like it's working. Uh, if you recall from the previous part, I inserted the, um, I should say the user name has a unique constraint, right? So whenever we create a user, we need to make sure that the username is unique. So it seems like everything is working. So let's turn our attention to the presentate or to the DAO layer and specifically to the employee DAO class. So that should open up here in a second. All right, so uh, this section, SQL parameter constants, simply defines our uh, SQL parameters. And then we're building up our SQL strings and creating constants that represent our SQL strings using our SQL parameters. And that will be the case with our delete employee. So that's where we start. We have all the parameters that we need. So what we do is we come up here and we start by creating another um, SQL a string constant, so private const string. And I'll just call it delete employee. equals and this should be pretty easy so all we're going to do here is we're going to just say delete well this will be a string quote delete and this will just be pure SQL right delete from table uh, employee space that's important right when you're doing these building up these SQL strings and I'm just going to concatenate and then continue the string on the next line where and again I'm capitalizing the SQL pieces of this string where and now here's where we're going to use one of our uh, constants I'm going to say where employee ID equals and then concatenate that. Whoop. Let's go concatenate. And then I'm going to come up here and use employee underscore ID, which represents our SQL parameter. Okay, just use autocomplete there. And that's it for the delete employee. Now, uh, I may as well just go ahead and uh, create the SQL string constant for update employee. So private const string. This one's going to be a little bit more involved because we're going to use all the SQL constants. Update, I'll say underscore employee equals. And uh, I'll type in a few of the um, uh, pieces of this string and then I'll copy the rest okay so uh, update in caps that's our SQL update uh, TBL right employee space quote and then oops concatenation operator set now each of the fields whatever fields you want to that's you're going to name each of these fields so first name first name equals quote concatenation and now use the first name SQL parameter that we've defined up here so first name constant right plus first name 
All right, now uh, then we concatenate that with a comma, okay, comma, space, that's important, and then just go ahead and do that, right? So now we can return to the next line. And I like to come over a few, right, maybe right there, and then I'll take a backspace, middle name. You see what I'm trying to, I'm just trying to line it up here. Middle name equals, come over here, concatenation, and then middle name, SQL parameter constant. Concatenate that with comma, oops. Okay, and then concatenate. And then you just continue like in that fashion now I'll just copy the rest. So last name, birthday. Space over. Okay, let me line this up. And let me line up this just to make it a little bit easier to read. The computer could care less about indentation, and et cetera, et cetera. So save my file. Okay, let's go over this. Now I have picture in here. I'm not gonna update the picture uh, just yet. So I will take a picture out of this equation. I will have a special video on uh, inserting an, a digital or an image into the database. But for now, we'll just deal with the text and date fields. So uh, first name, middle name, last name, birthday, hire date, is active. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll add username. Username equals Okay, plus username. Now I have to come up here, right? So that's not the last one, so I have to add a comma. So the last field does not get a comma. So just to be, let's, let's line this up here, just to make sure. Let's line these up. Makes it easier to see what's going on. And okay, so we see there's no space there, right? So that help, helps us catch mistakes. All right, so a set first name. So update table employee, set first name equals first name, set middle name equals middle name set last name equals and the last name, set birthday, hire date, is active, username. Let's make sure that we don't have any missing. So first name, middle name, last name, birthday, hire date, is active. Essentially, uh, we're gonna take uh, in our method, when I get down to the method, I'll talk more about it, but we're gonna have a populated employee value object and we're gonna just take that, send it back here to the DAO and it's gonna then update whatever fields need to be updated. It's going to update essentially all these fields. You could create custom uh, method uh, update methods, right, if you wanted to, that just updated certain fields. Like, for example, you might have just a field that updates the username, and that, that seems perfectly fine. And I'm going to create a field that updates is active, because a lot of times you just want to activate or deactivate an employee, okay? Not trying to say that this is a valid, like, employee... <laughs> application. This is a mostly for demonstration of how you might do something like this. But if you wanted to activate an employee, then you could just set, you know, set is active to true. And you wouldn't even need a VO in that case. You just send back a Boolean to say, activate this employee, right? And I will create that method as well. So we have two, uh, we have two string constants, which will be used in corresponding methods, uh, delete employee and update employee. So let's go ahead and head down to our 
um, methods. So here's where we have our insert employee method right here. I'm just going to come right below that and create a method called, well, start off with a access specifier public. And this will, uh, uh, when I update this employee, well, let me see, when I delete this employee, I think I want to just probably return nothing. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this will just be void. Okay. Uh, void. I might, I wonder if void, I'll, I'll just do void at this point. All right, so name of the method will be delete employee. Okay, now we're going to delete the employee. The employee, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Really, to delete the employee, you only need the employee ID, right? Well, that's because if you go up here to our constant, string constant, we have uh, delete employee. So all we need to delete the employee is the employee ID. But I'll create uh, the first version of this method. We'll take an employee VO, so I'll just call this VO. Okay, open brace, closing brace. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and the very first thing I want to do is I want to start with my logging. So log debug. Okay, log debug. All right, log debug. Entering, this is mostly just for trace, right? Entering delete employee method with a VO, or I'll just say with employee. Yeah, with employee and then plus a VO, just like that. And that'll uh, write out to the log what I'm doing. So when I need to debug my app, I can go in, set my logging level to debug. Okay. And then uh, as uh, things are running, it'll trace the execution of these methods. Now, uh, I'll say there's, whenever you delete something, you can delete, you know, usually a delete method will have um, effect on one row, many rows. You could delete employees by last name, right? This is just deleting one single employee. But I'll go ahead and create uh, an integer that keep track of the rows affected. Rows affected. Okay, equals zero. Now we uh, create a try catch. This should be second nature by now. Whenever you're doing this type of programming, something can go wrong. So uh, try catch. All right. So we're going to just catch the general exception. In this case, I'll say E. And I will uh, log error. Let me get my fingers uh, working right. Okay, log error. Uh, problem deleting employee. Now, let me delete employee. And uh, let's see, plus, let me make a space there. Plus E. Now, you, you can create different versions of these error messages right or these log messages in the application base you can uh, overload the methods like log error right now only have it only takes an object right so it's going to interpret the two string for this concatenated string so there's a two string method on the e object all right so the exception will be converted to a string version of the message so then I want to throw this because I'm in the DAO now and then E, 
So I'm going to, whatever happens here, if uh, something goes horribly wrong, I'm going to catch the exception, I'm going to log the error, and I'm going to throw that to propagate that up to the um, business object layer and let the business object layer know that something happened in the DAO. Now I can get busy. <clears throat> okay. So now I'm going to create the DB command, right? So just like this, here we have like, uh, we come up here, we always start off with creating the DB command, right? So let's create the DB command. So DB command. Equals database dot get SQL string command. There we go. And then feed it in delete employee. Now, once we have that command, we have to uh, add in the parameter database dot add in, oops, add in parameter. Okay, so we the first ar command, argument to this is command. The next argument is the employee ID, which is the uh, constant for the command parameter. Then we need to give it a type, and it's an int32, so db type dot int32. Isn't uh, IntelliSense wonderful? And then uh, vo dot employee ID. This is how we set the value that we're going to um, for that query. And then uh, we have this rows affected. We're going to say rows affected. I'm sorry, row. Let's say rows. I'm sorry, rows affected. Let's do rows affected. There we go. Rows affected equals database dot execute. Now this will be an execute non query. My keyboard must be out of place. Execute non query. And then uh, command. All right, so now we have rows affected. So once we set this, then we can come down here. We could uh, actually return rows affected and check it. it. It really depends on how you want to proceed, but I think I'll just do a check down here. I'll say if rows affected equals equals zero like that so if we didn't delete anything then I'm gonna throw an exception this might not be the best way I say log error because if we're trying to delete an employee and they don't and we don't delete anything then that should be an error We have to check what we're doing. And I'll say throw, I'll say throw new. Now, uh, something I haven't talked about in this uh, series is creating custom exceptions. So I think what I'll do is I'll say throw new exception. This is not a custom exception, throw new exception. And I'll just populate it with a message. Uh, data uh, employee. ID does uh, not exist in the database. I believe I can get away with that. So I'm just going to throw an exception. Okay. This, uh, this exception will be as a result of trying to execute this, um, trying to create the command that, that could possibly throw an exception trying to add in the parameter that might throw an exception and then uh, certainly executing the command uh, may possibly throw an exception 
Okay, so now if we get that, we're going to handle those exceptions here, and then if we uh, and then throw that. So we're never going to get to this code. Okay, so then if rows affected equals equals zero, which means that all this worked great, but we did not uh, delete anything from the database, then we have another problem, which is probably a business side problem. And then we need to just uh, alert the application that that's not an, a normal thing. So this may be an inelegant way to do it, but it's certainly valid for demonstration purposes. So rows affected equals equals zero, log the error and throw new exception that says employee ID does not exist in the database. Okay, and that will give us a hint as to what's going on. Uh, alrighty, so for the update employee, we need to uh, uh, work on that one. So let's go ahead and I'll put this down here. So I'll do update right above this one here. So I will create, so for comment, I'll, I'll do a comment like this. I'll say three slashes. This will be delete employee. And I'll say um, the parameter name VO is a fully populated. Well, I'll just say um, valid uh, employee object. Although I'm not checking for validity, it really just needs to have the employee ID um, has to exist or it should be a valid employee ID. All right, so valid uh, employee VO object, that's my comment. Now here, I will create uh, pub public, another method, update employee. This one's gonna return the updated employee uh, VO. So employee VO, update employee, takes an employee VO, call it VO. Come down here. First thing I do is I log debug. Okay, and I'll say entering, entering. Let me scooch this up a little bit. Entering update employee method with employee plus vo. Just like that. And then try catch. You can make uh, code snippets. I'll have to show you how to do that. Code snippets, code snippets are pretty cool in that they allow you to you know, define, like I could uh, put my cursor here, um, insert the code snippet, and it would like complete this, right? I might go ahead and do that. Okay, so then log error problem updating employee. I'll say employee. Well, I'll just say problem updating employee. And then concatenate that with the uh, exception that was thrown. Again, this is just going to be, and then I'm throw row E, whatever happens in this try block, that's the result of this exception. So, okay, uh, so now DB command, DB command. Once you get into the swing of coding these things, they you can code a, a couple D, DAOs a day, tested fully, right? Um, database. Get SQL command, string command, and then this will be update employee. So, like I say, once you get in the rhythm of coding these things, db command command equals, you can start moving uh, pretty pretty quick on coding these things. Now, uh, this one's going to be a little bit more involved, right, than the delete, uh, simply because you've got a lot more, right. So, for your update. A constant let's go back up here we have to set all these parameters right birthday hire date is active username employee ID now uh, the good news is right if we've created an employee we pretty much have all this stuff already done 
right? Because it's the same exact stuff. We're going to have to call the database in uh, add in parameter method. So check out this magic. We have uh, this insert employee method here, right? Sorry for wiggling around so much. Insert employee. We create the DB command, right? The command using database get SQL string command. And then we have to go database, add in parameter, first name, middle name, last name, birthday, hire date, is active, username. And, uh, and so our work is pretty much done for us. Let's go ahead and copy this username like this. Let's go, come on down, update employee. All right. Now for an update, you could also... Um, affect one or more rows because let's say I wanted to update every employee by last name, right? For some strange reason. Okay. So an update command could affect one or more rows. So again, I will have a, uh, int rows affected equals zero because that's going to be the result. Uh, so then, uh, essentially, rows affected equals uh, database uh, dot execute non-query uh, command, just like that. So if we built our insert then these will be the same. So add in parameter, first name, string, uh, except for now, uh, the only thing, what's missing here, right? So when we create an employee, we don't have the employee ID, but now um, would we ever want to update the employee ID? No, right? So uh, let's go up here and So we go to update employee, update employee. So first name, middle name, where employee ID. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna have to sit. So we're gonna just update a single employee. So uh, we're gonna say, so we need to set this, right? So we got the employee ID. So let's go ahead and set that. That's the last thing that's missing here. Database dot burps. Sometimes you like IntelliSense, sometimes you don't. Add in parameter command employee ID DB type dot um, in 32 and vo dot employee ID just like that okay so uh, let's see what else can happen so that's about that's about it so we're going to update the first name middle name last name a birthday hire date is active username and we need to set the employee ID. We're not updating the employee ID. We're just, um, we need to set the employee ID because the in, oh, I'm sorry, this is insert. I better watch what I'm doing. Let me back this up. Control X. Make sure you're in the right method. Let's come down here and move that down here. Yay, I'm in the, I'm in the right method. Okay. So database, uh, add in parameter, command, employee ID, user ID. So rows affected equals database, execute non-scalar. Perfect. Now, uh, again, if rows affected equals equals zero, and I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so if rows affected equals equals zero, open brace, closing brace, then I'm going to report the error, so log error. Okay. 
I'll say error update an employee period uh, plus well let me just do this error update an employee semicolon or colon space quote plus and then a VO so I'm going to log that as an error and then throw new exception I'll say employee uh, update oh let me see what should I say employee uh, does not exist well at least by that um, you know data or uh, by the employee ID if we were not able to update that employee ID because rows affected equals zero then either that employee ID does not exist in the database so I'll say in the database for employee and I'll say plus I'll say for employee ID or actually I'll do it like this nothing like designing on the fly employee ID space quote plus VO dot employee ID plus quote space does not exist in database well that's what we think anyway so the nice thing about hand coding these DAOs is that if you find these error messages inappropriate for what's going on as time progresses you can change them <clears throat> you could even have these all these different things that you're trying to report in a configuration file somewhere all right so command save so let's save that so we have two methods we have delete employee and we have update employee so now oh, I see see this red that means like you're not quite done right so so we let me just go ahead and return I'll do this I'll say return via now <clears throat> Uh, what we should do is, well, let's just go ahead and test this, return VO. And then I'll talk about like, you know, some of the optimizations and some of the issues with like doing things the way I've done them up to this point. Okay, rows affected equals zero. Let's see here. Okay. What this saying is like, it's not necessary to assign zero, but I like to be explicit. Okay. All right. So save. Now let's go to the business object layer and we're going to go to employee BO. Again, these methods will be fairly simple to implement. This is a uh, in namespace. And this is a uh, end. Okay. That's the end of that method right there. So I'm going to come down here with let's see what we got public employee that should work control save all right well this is the class definition employee okay I'm good. Let's just go ahead and create a new class public. There we go. Public, I'll say um, void, right? This will be the delete, delete employee. Now, uh, I think what I might do is, I might do something like this. I might say uh, boolean, a bool. Delete employee. 
employee VO. Of course, now all we do here is we go employee DAO. equals new employee DAO. All right, uh, I'm going to put this in a try catch block. Try. Catch exception. Exception E, just like this, and then log error. I'll just log error E. Okay, and then throw. Because I want to propagate this up if there's a problem to the next level. Okay, um, now. So employee DAO, DAO equals new DAO, and then DAO dot delete employee VO. So and that's that method right there. Okay. Okay. Now let's come up here and I'll say valid uh, employee DO. Uh, valid employee VO, I should say. Valid employee VO. Now, the same for the update. The update, since a lot of the heavy lifting, well, I'd say all the heavy lifting is done in the DAO, right? Then uh, public, um, and I'm going to return the employee VO. Update. Employee, employee VO, VO. So again, try. Catch, exception E. In my book, C, uh, C Sharp for Artists, and uh, the other book, ASP.NET, An Integrated Approach. Uh, talk about custom exceptions and how to make custom exceptions. So a lot of times when you're uh, programming these types of things, you, uh, you can create a whole different set of exceptions for each particular uh, logical layer of your architecture that um, makes it easier to figure out, like, oh, where, where is this error coming from? Even though you log the class, right, when, when the error occurs. Um, it does help to have custom exceptions because then uh, it, it enables you to better handle the exception based on the exception type. Okay, so the log error. Um, I'll just I'll just log the e at this point. I put the business object layer and then throw e again. See, like for example here, right? Like if if we go back to the employee do. Let me save this. If we go back to the employee do. Instead of catching just a general exception, then I would actually have custom exceptions um, that are specific to either SQL, right? Because it's like, well, I want to know if it's an SQL exception or this, even though E will eventually tell me everything I want to know. So in some ways you could say, yeah, this is probably good enough. But for example, um, if I had a DB exception, then I could handle, I could say, well, I could have special handling based on the fact that the error occurred. Um, there are ways to recover, right, from different types of exceptions. I could try again, I could, I could try something else, um, or I could change my processing based on the different type of exception that was thrown. Um, but the, if you're just catching the general exceptions, probably not the best thing. Eventually you want to catch the general exception just in case something happens and you just have no idea, you know, what it was and it's something that's out of the ordinary, right? But what hap what, what you want to do is you want to actually catch the most specific exception first and then eventually catch the general exception. That's, that's really the rule of thumb for exception handling. 
So let's go back to the business object layer. Again here, right, I would have an exception that more is more tailored to the business object layer, right, that I'm catching here and throwing, and then maybe eventually. So again, I'm going to just uh, repeat pretty much this code here. You can totally, uh, it's probably not a bad idea to just have, instead of creating these DAOs in each of these methods, right, depending on how, how heavily used your application is, one of the optimizations may be just create the DAO once for this particular, you know, have a, I want to say like a global level or a class level or a property called DAO, and then just go ahead and, um, you know, use that DAO to call these methods on it for each of these things that you want to do. And that's probably not a bad idea either. Um, sometimes I get programming and I do a brute force approach. All right, so DAO dot um, update. Now, what I could do here is just say return a DAO. Although, uh, in this case, what happens if I catch the exception? Then I'm not, I'm not going to be able to return... I'll do this. Uh, let's see, return DAO. Update employee. VO. Okay. So, all right, so employee DAO, DAO. Now again, up here, I could say uh, log, I'm not really, I probably forgot to do it a few times, log debug. Just for tracing purposes, entering um, update. Haha, <laughs> EMP, LOY, employee method. Man, entering employee method. Update, entering update employee method. Okay, so log debug, got that one. Let's see if I've done it up here. Nope, see, I'm slacking off. So I'll just copy this, log debug. I didn't show you last time. I don't think I went to the logs. This time I'll show you the log entries um, when we run this delete employee. So bool, oh, okay, so here, um, I think what I want to do here is if I do everything fine, if all this completes, all this code, I want to return uh, true. Okay, like, oh yeah, everything happened fine. If I had to catch the exception, if I'm throwing the ex uh, exception, Actually, what I want to do is this. This is like a catch-22. I, maybe I don't want to do bull here. I'll put void. All right, I'll catch the exception. So don't return true. Okay. Leave it just like that. Okay. And I'll move this. I prefer to do it like this. Maybe it's rewriting it for me. Catch. Yeah, I think that's what it's doing. Okay. Try catch. Try catch. Yeah, it's rewriting it for me. It's formatting my code. Help me. All right. So delete employee and then update employee. Valid employee via object. I'm just kind of tweaking things now. Okay, so two methods in our business object uh, employee BO. 
deleted employee and update employee. At this point, you're probably saying, what good is the business object if all you're doing is just creating pass-through methods? Well, that's a good question. Your business layer um, uh, is used for transaction processing. That's a good use for it. Uh, there's, um, if you needed to hit multiple DAOs, that's probably a good place to do it too, right? So uh, I just find that it's, it's easier to do coordinated processing amongst multiple DAOs if you have a, a BO layer right so any any type of a thing that requires uh if i especially if you're hitting multiple databases right or if you're hitting uh, complex business processes that require like well i need to insert this in this record before i tried inserting something over here and if there's an error anywhere in this process then roll back the entire transaction then those types of operations are best handled in transaction with a transactional object. I haven't even started to cover that stuff yet, so that's that's a future video. Okay, so uh, save. Now at this point, at this point, let's build the project. So we'll go up here to build, and we'll say build solution. Now this isn't going to run it, but it will build. And if we have any errors, we should see them now. You don't want to probably go even as far as I did to uh, before you try to build. Like every time you write a method and you get to a point where you can build the project, you should build the project. Uh, is it building? Here's another way to build. Something's working. Maybe it built so fast I didn't know it. Let me right click again. Oh, there we go. Build started. Okay. So zero failed, one up to date. All right. So no problems. Well, I'll say this, it built, right? So that's a step in the right direction. So let me pull this down. Now let's go to the uh, program application layer and we'll write some test code. So <clears throat> first off, let's run this and take, a, take stock of where we're at. So start. So um, as it runs here, right we get a list okay so here's what I did we uh, implement we um, inserted right so we did a, a get all employee let's go through the code Heck. all right so here's the code right we create the employee business object we go through um, I'll get all employees we write those to the console right console right line VO and then we're going to say, let's insert a new employee. So we create uh, one with L. Here we have, uh, this is the last time we did it, right? So I'm creating uh, L Richter 1. The first time this ran, right? Like the first time I ran it, that was the username. The next time I ran it, that's the username. And I haven't changed it. So when we run this, we get, uh, oh, I closed it, all right. I'll show you, I'll show you what happens. So let's run it again. Let's stop this and run this one more time. Okay, so I'm trying to insert a, a non-unique user ID. And so when I do that, we get the exception. So here, right, so, so we've already inserted, right? So the reason why you see two of these records here, 20 and 21, is because um, in the last video, I ran it with um, inserting this Laura Jean Richter um, with that username. And then I inserted a new one. I modified the application and changed the username to L Richter one now when i try to run it subsequently i get this uh, violation of unique key constraint right so the user that the new one i'm trying to enter still has a l richter one right i'm trying to insert that again and i'm getting this error so that's why we don't see any more in there right so that's the last one in there so now what i want to do is i'm, I'm just going to add uh i'll just add a little line here that says 
it says insert new employee okay and then after this we we do a um, we try to insert the employee all right then we have this um, we get we're, we're getting the exception we're writing this out to the console and then I'm doing a get all employees right just to, to show that that new employees in there so now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say try okay let me scope down catch exception okay so um, the problem is we need to get an employee we have to have a valid user ID or a, yeah an employee ID or an or VO before we can actually call this so let me go ahead and set up the framework here so exception e open brace okay all right so try catch let's go up here class static okay for each get all employees Try catch exception E. All right. Oh, it's running. That's why it's telling me the green light. So let me quit that. Okay. So uh, now, at this point, let me just do a console. If that throws an exception, I'm just going to write that exception out to the console. Okay. Uh, now, how are we going to get... Let's go back to the DAO. So we have our uh, update employee. We have our insert employee. So we're going to come up here to program, right? Whenever we, we have this employee VO that we're creating, employee VO called employee. Now what we're going to do here is whenever we insert this employee, we're going to say employee equals employee uh, BO. So now what this does is it will um, return the fully populated employee uh, value object um, with the valid employee ID based on that insert. So now we will have, so if we want to delete this employee, we can come down here. So let's do this. So this doesn't run too fast, right? So we're going to insert the employee and then we're going to say, get all employees. And we'll do a uh, console.readline. Control C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say all right, console dot right. continue and then console.readline so we're going to get all the employees and print them out then we're going to try to delete the employee the last one that we entered right so uh, that one's not going to be successful so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into the database and delete that employee first in order to get this to work or I'll just change it so we'll do employee like with a different username so then I'll say delete uh, I'll do um, 
employee bio dot delete employee employee okay mm, and then we're going to do we'll repeat this get all the employees and print them out and then we should see the change so without going to the database to make any changes i'm going to change this laura richter one to laura richter two so now what we should see is we should see a no exception we should see the um uh, get all employees and then we're going to insert the new employee with a, a unique username and then we're going to uh, list the employees again to see that new record and then we're going to delete that record and then we'll list them again We should see that record disappear. So let's see if that works now live programming uh, Doing things on the fly even though this is a video and of course I could edit it. It's still um, You never know until you run the program and see what happens All right, so Could be a mistake in my typing all right, so there we go. Okay, so here was the first one, right? So this is the stuff that was already in the database. There's Laura Richter one for username. Now I'm inserting a new employee, okay? And then here's the new record, uh, 26, okay? I guess this is the temps, right? I have to go into the. Um, I'd have to go into the database, uh, the logs, to see uh, how how this got incremented, right? Now the thing is, right? I could go in there, run my database scripts, and set everything back to the way it was. That's the cool thing about having those scripts. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, when I uh, hit any key to continue, I'm going to then delete. There we go. Whoa, that was too fast. I think it was paused. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's go in and try this one more time. Well, okay, so if it worked, then this record shouldn't be in there. So let me run this one more time. Start. All right, here it goes. All right, there we go. So again, right, so it worked, but it was, it didn't, let me do this. Let me, no, let me, so new employee, let me hit any key to continue. There we go. That didn't pause that time. So it did delete. Notice here, although it's not very well um, delineated, delineated. So insert employee, get all, empl here's what I'm not doing. Let me do this. I know this app's a mess, right? This really, all this stuff here should be done. Okay. I should say, let's do this. Delete. Employee with uh, ID plus plus there we go so now uh, it's going to delineate slash in slash in delete employee so we delete the employee and then put that there as a delineator. All right, now let's run it. So it should be a little bit clearer what's going on. Okay. It sure does take a while to compile here. Here we go, it's running. All right, so here's the original, right? 
I insert the new employee. There's the new employee. And now hit any key to continue. See, this is the weird part. I'm hitting the enter key, but it's not. There it goes. Something's wrong. Okay. So delete uh, employee with ID 28. And that record is gone. So now hit any key to continue. And there we go. So that piece is working. So we've added two new CRUD. Well, we've completed the basic CRUD, right? So create operation is the insert employee. Let's go to the DAO. We have our insert employee uh, method. So let me do this. Insert employee. And I'll say populated via. Fully populated employee VO object. So we insert the employee. We can update the employee. This is in our DAO. I'm just adding these comments. All right, and then uh, valid. Uh, these types of comments can be used to generate documentation, so it's always nice to put these types of comments in your code. Employee VO, update employee, and then delete employee. Now, um, it's also uh, would be nice, we have this get all employees uh, method. I'll leave some of this stuff up as an exercise, right? So you've seen the basic uh, CRUD operations, insert employee, update employee, delete employee, okay? And get employee, well, then the, these are your utility methods down here, fill in an employee. Um, uh, the next really big thing uh, that you might wanna do, so here's some ideas for uh, activities you can do on your own. Just return a list of active employees. Right now, the get all employees uh, method returns all employees, right? Because that's the query. But I would add another method called get all active employees, right? And then you might have another method that um, activates or deactivates an employee, right? So set employee active or set employee inactive, which takes a Boolean and change the employee's uh, status from active to inactive. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, in the next video, I'll talk about how to insert a picture which is a big blob of binary data. And that'd be like the biggest important thing to know how to do because uh, there are some tricky things. And then I haven't Ill, uh, even really dealt with the gender piece. So in our employee, if we open up our employee value object in the infrastructure layer, let's take a look at that. Actually, it's in the person VO. The person has uh, this uh, enumeration and it has a gender and I haven't been inserting gender Right, so if we take a look at the output of the program when we run the program, right, everybody's a male, right, unless I put test data in there and changed it to male or female. But for example, for the last record that I put in there, um, Laura Richter, right, which obviously Laura is a female name, I'm just using the default. And so in the, the default value of the gender is male. Right, so whenever we see those records being tested, right, it says Laura Jean Richter is a male. So uh, I need to talk, discuss the gender and the and the um, picture, okay, for at least for this database, right, because those are interesting things. Gender is a uh, type, and it has to be dealt with a little bit differently in the database, or at least in the DAO, because we're taking a value in the database and we're going to turn it into a um, you know, an enumeration 
right in in the in the business lane in, in the application layer and then the picture is going to be uh, like an image that you upload f to represent an employee's picture but it's going to be converted into bytes and sent uh, and then stored in the database and there's different ways to do this too right but um, anyway I uh, we're at we're at an hour a little bit over an hour in this video I didn't think it would go that long but uh, anyway I will see you in the next part seven which will be uh, can, uh, how to do the picture and how to do the gender. All right, hope you found this helpful.